More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun, but for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cyclist. Well, there's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpecin de Koenig and Canyon SRAM. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. Back. It's the Zwift Academy Finals 2022. I didn't really expect you to be invited back, Si, I'll be no, honest. No, neither did I, but I have promised to let Matthew van der Poel win at ping pong this time. Now, Zwift Academy Finals have moved from a Mallorcan villa to this top spec cycling specific training facility in southern Spain. And I've got to say, as a, a lean mean cycling machine myself, I feel quite at home here, man. Well, if anywhere is going to help you not go so slow, it's definitely here. <laughs> training facilities do not get any better. No, and neither to the roads either. We have some of the greatest roads in Europe on our doorstep, so there is no finer place for our pro team judges to put our finalists through their paces over the next five days. But before we go any further, let's meet our finalists. My name is Elena Wu Yen. I am 26 years old and I'm from New York City. The moment that I found out um, I made it to Zwift Academy, I was actually kind of confused. Like, you've made the finals and I was like, whoa, like this is unreal. I'm Nela. I'm from Germany, Cologne. I'm Cooper Sayers from Adelaide, Australia. I'm Chiara. I'm 37 years old, coming from uh, Italy. I'm Luca Vergalito. I'm from Milan and I'm 25 years of age. The hotel is, is wonderful. I'm looking forward to ride my bike. I can't wait. My name is Jasper. I'm 27 years old and I live in Belgium. My name's Lucas Hoffman, I'm 25. I'm from Adelaide, South Australia. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Will Loudon, I'm 19, and I'm from the fair county of Suffolk in the United Kingdom. I'm slightly nervous, I just want to enjoy it. I think it's gonna be a really good experience and we'll just see how we can go. <laughs> I'm Alex Morris, I'm 22, and I'm from Guildford in England. I think this week is really special. There's no opportunity quite like this. Winning would be the absolute dream. <laughs> They're so nice. This is such an upgrade on my bike. Hi. Hey guys. Look at Alex. Hi, hello. Oh, hey. Hey. How are you? Yeah. How are you guys? Look at yeah. Are these the bikes? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. The bike. Oh they put my name on it. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of Okay, I'm ready. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, hi guys. Hi, hi I'm Will. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Hello. Hi. hi. Elena. Hello, everybody. Oh, hi. hi. How are you all doing? <laughs> Great to have you. Congratulations on making the final. How's, how's the travel? That's yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And what does it feel to finally like all meet each other, like face to face? Yeah. It's yeah, pretty cool. Great. Yeah. Good. Your friends? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no enemies just yet. <laughs> So there we have it, our finalists, 10 of the most gifted amateur cyclists out there. But we have had some sad news already, haven't we, Si? Yeah, we have. So Liz Van Howling of the USA will not be able to start the competition through illness. So she's flown all the way out to Spain only to be struck down by COVID-19. So our hearts go out to her, quite frankly. And it means that there are nine finalists remaining. And standing between them and their dreams, they have each other. They have some of the toughest tests that we could concoct, both indoors and out. But most importantly, they've got the decision makers, the pro team judges. My name is Christoph Rothoff, Sportive Manager of Alpes in de Koning. I am Christoph de Kegel, Head of Performance of Alpes in de Koning. 
To be a pro rider for Alpes in the Koning, you have to be a strong rider physically, dedicated to achieve the win for the team. But also we are looking for the right mental skills, right social skills. We are, uh, as one team, always on the road together. I'm Beth Dure and I'm team co-owner of Canyon Ram Racing. I'm Magnus Bakstedt, I'm the head sport director for Canyon Shram Racing. This is my seventh Swift Academy road, so I have seen a lot of talented riders come through the program. It's my first year at Swift Academy and it's really turning in to be a super platform for lots of talented riders who turn professional. We're looking for riders that are driven and ambitious. They need to want to be the best pro rider that they can be. It's not just the team staff the riders need to impress, but also the top pros who they could ride alongside next season in some of the biggest races in the world. I'm Mathieu van der Poel and I'm riding for Alpes in the Koning team. You have to be a good rider, of course, but also um, the dedication to, to try and be the best version of yourself, I think. It takes a lot of perseverance, commitment, sacrifice and effort to become a professional rider on a team like Alpes in the Koenig. Uh, I'm Elise Schabe and I'm uh, riding for Kenyans from Racing Team. So it's most important that uh, you're a good teammate and uh, that also you have the willing to, to do well and to give everything every time you go to a race. Like obviously they are really nervous because there's only one contract and they know, yeah, one of them is going to win. <laughs> right then, we better go and tell them what's in store in the next five days. Let's do it. There's some nice canapes over there, man. Yeah, I'm quite hungry actually. Welcome finalists, glad to see you all settling into the Zwift Academy Training Centre and getting to meet some of the Canyon Tram and Alpsint to Koenig team. Yeah, don't get too comfortable though because the competition starts tomorrow and over the next five days you will need to push yourselves to the absolute limit through a series of tests that will give you the opportunity to show that you've got what it takes to be a pro cyclist. Make each day count because not all of you will be here on the final day of the competition. That's right. Now the first test will take place tomorrow in the Zwift Arena, deep in the heart of the complex here. You'll be tackling a gruelling fitness test performed on Zwift, and it's designed to give the coaches a forensic look at your physiologies. There will be nowhere to hide, so if I were you, I would carefully consider which canapes will give you the optimal fueling strategy for tomorrow, and also get some advice from some more experienced hands. Obviously, Sai is here to help with that, but I would ignore him if I was you. Instead, we've got the professional riders of Canyon Tram and Alpsin de Koenig. So riders that you're going to be training with and racing against this week, plus who two of you will be calling teammates next year. Should we have some canapes? It may all be friendly now, but tomorrow the competition starts and the riders are going to need to impress the judges quickly. And later this week, some riders will be eliminated without even completing the final challenges. Yeah, it's rough, but no one said this was going to be easy. And I suspect even now, Manon, beneath that friendly exterior, there's going to be some rivalries developing. Yeah. It's the morning of day one, and we've got a little surprise after breakfast for our finalists. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. <laughs> Pretty surreal. Like, it's happening again. Hopefully this time it's too good. Show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Neela Lying. 
I'm 23 years old and I'm from Cologne, Germany. I study sports science in Cologne at the Sports University. I started cycling about two and a half years ago. At that time I was running, got injured and decided I started riding my bike. Didn't have a bike computer, so I was just riding wherever I wanted. Cycling for me was mostly about freedom. When I started swifting, I focused more on numbers. Swift for me was an opportunity to really do what you're supposed to do, so really write your workouts properly. Uh, when I started racing this spring, I had my first race in Cologne. It actually w went out really, really good because I took the first place. <laughs> From this week, I expect to really learn a lot about what I can do, what I'm capable of. Winning the pro contract would mean a lot to me because it would be the beginning of a whole new chapter in my life. That would mean that I really gave my 100% and I was the best version of myself I could, I could show. It's game time. This is the Zwift Arena where the contestants are going to be first doing battle. Now, their new bikes haven't been set up yet, but mine has. So if you're not familiar with how this all works, then let me talk you through the process. As you can see, the back wheel's been removed and the bike has been attached to this, which is an indoor trainer. This one is made by Tax. It's got two main functions. Firstly, it records how much power the rider is producing. And instead of that power then going into your back wheel and driving you forwards, instead the trainer translates it and gives it to Zwift, which is a virtual reality indoor cycling and training platform. And then your avatar will move accordingly depending on how much power you're producing. Now that's clever but the really cool bit is that Zwift will then tell the indoor trainer how much resistance to apply depending on what's going on in the game. So for example, if you're riding uphill, it will feel like you're riding uphill and correspondingly, when you're riding downhill, it will feel like you're riding downhill. So over the course of the week, the riders will be doing several rides on Zwift and also a race as well. But today, it's all about their physiological data. So the coaches are looking to get insight as to not just how big the riders' engines are, but also what type of engine they've got. So are they a big aerobic athlete or do they rely more on their anaerobic system for top performance? So perhaps smaller engine, bigger turbo. That kind of knowledge will be really useful today, but actually it will also help the coaches decipher the riders' performances as the week goes on. Good morning, finalists. As we did last year, we're starting the finals week with the inside test on Zwift. Yep, so this is going to give the coaches an accurate indication of your raw cycling ability. Now the good news is that for most of this test, you're just going to be gently spinning your legs. The bad news is that, that gentle spinning is going to be punctuated by four intervals, okay? They're going to start short and vicious, and they're going to finish long and, frankly, vicious. Give it everything you've got. You can't afford to leave anything in the tank. Good luck. The test comprises of four maximal efforts. First up, it's a 20 second sprint from a dead stop. Now to get the data the judges need, the riders aren't allowed to either get out of the saddle or change gear. Right then, the first 20 second test is out of the way. You can see the riders are still recovering from that. Even though it's just 20 seconds long, it's enough that they're gonna be generating quite a lot of lactate in the legs. So they're gonna be pretty sore and breathing pretty hard from it. Next, it's a three-minute effort. So, Magnus, what are you expecting to see from this test? 
and just give us a 360 degree view of, of the rider's sort of power profiles, really. Yeah, and we've had a three minute one. Yeah. That's, that can be a really hard effort to kind of pace. It is, and we saw some of the riders pacing that slightly differently to the others. Some longer efforts to come now, but yeah. it is pretty hot in here, yes. isn't it? <laughs> How is that going to affect them? Um, I think it will affect them to a certain extent, but so far they're dealing really well with the, um, with the heat management, so um, body temperature seems to be staying where it should be. Next, it's six minutes. Come on. Okay, so we're into our last effort of the test now, the longest one, 10 minutes long. This is the one that will show their aerobic capacity. Come on. Well done. You absolutely smashed that. How was it for you? Uh, the feeling was good and the exercise was quite hard, but I was feeling well, so I'm happy with that. It was brutal. Yeah. Are you happy with, happy with how it went? Uh, I'm, I was hoping for better numbers, honestly. I think I was just like hotter than expected. Someone's got to do it, right? How feeling, Coop? Pretty nervous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Too much pressure than last year. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Yeah, I'm back. Hi, I'm Cooper Sayers. I'm 23 from Adelaide, Australia. The whole experience of the Zwift Academy was a high for me last year. Like the opportunity to be in front of one of the world's greatest teams and um, the staff and all that was incredible. Definitely, yeah, you know, riders of the day twice. They've actually gone for Cooper again. Congratulations. Winning some challenges was amazing. And then, you know, you have the, the low of getting close and yeah, not, not winning. I took on board all the feedback that all the coaches gave me and all the staff. And yeah, I just really turned it into motivation and still have the dream of going pro. So come back and ready to give it my best shot. As an athlete, you always have setbacks um, and, you know, it's just another fork in the road. So every setback you have or anything that stops you, it always makes you a better person. A lot of feedback that I got from last year was obviously based around experience and racing exposure. I got a great opportunity this year to come overseas and have been racing overseas for the majority of the year. It's shown me a lot of myself, being able to like move and adapt to a new lifestyle and new racing. It just helped me improve all around as a rider and see that I do have the capabilities to go pro. Obviously, Alpsen are looking not just for a Zwifter, but also someone that can fit into their team. And I'm hoping that with all the experience that I've gained from, the, from this year, that, yeah, that'll help give me the edge. I think that it's gonna be super challenging. Different riders have different strengths and yeah, best person will win. Right guys, you're up next. Dig deep and give it your all. Good luck. As with the female contestants, first up for the guys is the sprint. Christoph, it begins. Have you got an idea already of the type of rider that you're looking for? Of the type of rider, not really. Um, I think we first need to see and, and always start from the numbers. I'm particularly looking forward to the to the three minute effort. Okay, that tells a lot uh, for most of the riders. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Next, the three minute test, and all eyes are on Cooper. This is his biggest strength. Okay hey guys, you've just watched the finalists do their three minute test. Do you do this test on a regular basis? On training camp we always do it and uh, it's, it's really a hard, uh, a hard test, but uh, yeah, especially here for the guys on the rollers, it must be even harder. <laughs> if you overpace and then you look up and it's still two minutes to go, then it's a really long 
a long way to go. Um, also mentally, it's pretty hard. But yeah, it gives you a good insight on how you can uh, manage the trainings. It's the six minutes next. The temperature is really starting to bite, particularly for Jesper, it would seem. Okay, then three intervals down now, just one left, and it's the 10 minute. Can they keep their cool in this searing heat? Were you happy with how it all went? Yeah, I think uh, I did probably similar better numbers than last year, uh, especially in the 20 second sprint so, and the 10 minutes. So yeah, I'm, yeah it's happy a good with start. How you, how you paced it as well? Yeah. You look like you enjoyed that effort quite a lot. You were kind of smiling halfway through. Uh, sometimes <laughs> smiling is the best way to get through it. Okay, so it's the first of the coaches' deliberations of the week. We're going to do it all together. I'm going to start with you, Beth. Any standout performances from the female finalists for you today? So I probably was hoping that someone would really stand out compared to another, but across the board, they were quite even. And Magnus, I mean, I guess you'd agree with that. In terms of, you know, we saw perhaps Alex had the highest absolute powers. But then when it comes out on the road, is that necessarily going to translate to the best cyclist? No, I mean, we've got to take everything into account, how they handle, you know, their bikes, um, sprints, downhills, um, you know, anything that comes, you know, gets thrown into uh, the path of a rider. So the test is good to see that they, they're all, they've come here and they're ready. Um, and like Beth said, I think they were performing pretty decent. Okay, so good level then. And what about you, Christoph, on the men's side of things? Anyone stood out for you? In general, we saw a good overall performance of all the, the five contenders. Uh, for me personally, after today, um, Luca um, outperformed it a bit. Yeah, the differences are still very, very small. But on the complete exercise from the, the 20 second sprint until the 10 minute effort, Okay, and what about Cooper? Because we've seen him in this situation before. Were you looking at him and thinking that he's made a step forward this year? Well, that's what we hope. That's the reason why he is back, uh, back here and uh, back in the game selected. He looked confident coming in today, having done it before. I, I wonder whether that was a bit of an advantage, perhaps. Yeah, nice to see maybe um, just being already one time through this complete experience, uh, the, the stress, how you handle the days, uh, how you take care of the recovery, the fatigue, uh, the nutrition, because maybe yeah, last year, day four, day five, it went a bit wrong. Maybe that was a nutrition problem. I wonder whether he's going to be telling the fellow contestants, giving them advice. If it was me, I wouldn't. I'd have kept it completely <laughs> to myself. Not. But, <laughs> what about um, weaker riders, Beth? I mean, you said everyone was sort of like, equal on the female side of things but in terms of other things that you could pick out perhaps like their pacing strategies or the way they you know sit on the bike did anything stand out to you as perhaps being a bit of a warning sign i wouldn't say necessarily warning sign i think eleanor in the um, six minutes test she probably didn't pace herself that well and she really went out hard and then could sort of see she dropped but at the same time she came back up again at the end but apart from that yeah there was difficult to find like a real standout weak link. Yeah, I have to agree with Beth on that. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm looking at as well is that, you know, the upper body strength, the core stability of the rider when they're doing the more violent sort of shorter efforts, how do they, you know, transmit the power onto the bike that we'll, we'll see later on in the week as well as the fatigue starts setting, settling in. Yeah, and what about you, Chris? Have any riders stood out perhaps as being a little bit weaker? Maybe Jasper was a little bit weaker uh, on the overall performance of today. But as I said, we have to mention a little bit. I was mostly concerned about uh, his cadence, how he, uh, how he handled the efforts. Um, he started really well in each type of effort, but the second half of each effort, he dropped a bit to a cadence that was yeah, around 80 average, which is 
Yeah, really low. It puts a lot of pressure on his legs, doesn't it? So if you abuse the, the, the fast twitch muscle power a bit, then it's hard to, to just get through a complete uh, week of fatigue like this. And that's what pro cycling is all uh, also mostly about. Eh? Okay, one other thing with Jasper is he looked like he was incredibly hot. Now, it was baking in that room, wasn't it? Yeah. Magnus, we spoke and you were saying it's, it's the same for everyone, but is it really? You know, you were a man for the Spring Classics, you won Paris Bay. Also, as a bigger rider, typically that would suggest that you wouldn't deal with heat quite so well. Yeah, I, th I think it is ultimately. Um, you know, for me as a rider, it was always the first day in the heat, I struggled. Second day, I adapted to it. It's actually interesting to see how they cope with the, the, the conditions that we had in that room today. They were too hot, but. You know, can you deal with that situation? Can you adapt to it and perform under under the stress that uh, other you might not otherwise have? Okay, so no sympathy. No, no none whatsoever. No sympathy. <laughs> um, and Beth, I think you mentioned that there was something um, that you noticed in Kiara as well when she was riding. Yes, uh, both Maggie and I noticed that Kiara, like her power file, like a power graph at the bottom of the screen was so rock solid like there was no spikes at all and it was really it was actually outstanding that she obviously knew what power she could do and was able to deliver it that like the numbers were good also but it was just that she was just a constant flat line now that's really interesting isn't it would you rather have a rider that came to the Zwift academy as the complete package that could already do impressive tests and pedal efficiently or would you rather have a rough diamond perhaps so someone that came into this test made a complete hash of it got their pacing wrong but still just about got the numbers out i think that depends on the what we see in the challenges coming up okay finalists congratulations all of you okay you have made it through day one and it was a particularly gruelling fitness test, made even harder by the heat. But you did it, and I've got to say, I didn't realise quite how much of a sadist I was, but it was a pleasure to watch you. It really was, and the judges have been watching you closely, and they have all that important data. That's right, they've been picking through it, and have carefully selected their rider of the day. So who has shone the brightest on day one? The riders of the day are... Kiara and Luca. Congratulations both of you, well done. Congratulations. Kiara, they said that you paced your effort to perfection and you executed all the efforts really well. And Luca, they said that you basically smashed every single effort and you really shone bright, so congratulations. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, that does mean that I've got the difficult task tonight. So the riders that will be leaving the competition. No, I'm only kidding. You're all staying, don't you worry about it. Go and get some food. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Well right, guys. It was quite unexpected and uh, I'm really happy. I hope to do the best that I can and to, to be happy every day. It's nice to be the first rider of the day, of the week. It's good to start well, but hopefully it will continue like this, and hopefully the best is yet to come. Well, that brings us to the end of day one of Zwift Academy 2022. Four more days to go, and we will know who our two new professional cyclists are gonna be. What do you think to my little joke at the end there, Manon? They all probably hate you after that. I know I would anyway, yeah. that was savage. It was, yeah, but a bit much, maybe. Anyway, what did you make of today? That was a really brutal start to the day. I don't think you can do anything harder on an indoor trainer than, than physical tests, but I'm really excited for tomorrow, out on the roads with a pro and a cheeky time trial in there too, which is gonna be super exciting. That's right, and it's gonna be fascinating to see how this pans out as well. I think in the women's competition, it's a really even field, so will we see someone emerge tomorrow as the dominant rider. And then in the men's field, we've got our early leader, Luca, put in an incredible performance today, but he is now the rider to beat and they're all gonna be after him. So actually, he might be feeling a little bit nervous in some respects as well. Anyway, you can find out in episode two of Zwift Academy 2022. We will see you there.
next time on Zwift Academy Finals. The finalists hit the Spanish roads with the pros. <laughs> the riders give it their all on a hill climb time trial and the judges have a tough decision to make. She was straight in like she'd been doing it for 10 years. The riders of the day are 